In more news, the rise of the metaverse is getting really crazy. And speaking of the NOI and people from that, Brother Ben X has been out here on his digital wave, getting the black people into cryptocurrency and digital real estate, which honestly, not mad at it. He also just recently did a TED talk on it. So, you know, I'm really proud of the guy, but uh, y'all know how I feel about the metaverse and I'm going to get into it. Um... But the problem that I have with this push of digital real estate in cryptocurrency is that all of the things that the elite give us are usually ultimately used for our demise. It's always used for the worst reason. They always implement it like it's going to be fun. It's going to be this. You're going to be able to do things so quickly. And then before you know it, you're paying taxes on some. It always happens like that. It never fails ever. And we all know that Brother Ben X is a huge advocate for doing your due diligence for things that you're going to involve yourself in or participate in. And so I actually have been doing a little research on things like the metaverse and digital real estate and things like that. And as far as I'm concerned, he has not done his due diligence on not on buying digital real estate and cryptocurrency because it seems like he's a really smart guy at that, but he has not done his due diligence with how the mind works and how um, technology works with the mind. You know, let's just put it this way. Bill Gates. Um, what's the other guy name that does um, Steve Jobs, all of those big time tech guys. They don't let their kids on the internet. Their kids do not have a phone with the internet on it. Why? Because they know how addictive the internet can be. They made it. They know what it's all about. So I just find it very funny that a guy that does his homework on essentially everything that he talks about doesn't talk about the other aspect of the metaverse doesn't talk about the future of it, that what it could be and how harmful it could be to the black community, especially the black community, because we're already so far behind in things like um, generational wealth. So if you're spending all your time inside of a fake reality, then all the things on the outside will eventually either go up in price or will be gone by the time you even make this wealth in the fake world. So it's like, we're literally just funding our own prison at this point. You know, they're, they're, I feel like they're using this, the metaverse, to trap our consciousness. Don't get it twisted. They have been monitoring what a conscious is, what, what a conscious is, what a soul is, how much a soul weighs, what do, where does a soul go after your body is gone, after you're dead, They've been studying that stuff. You know, you can look up a couple of articles on it or whatever, but y'all niggas ain't into that. I am. So, you know, I'll probably put in some links or something for y'all, but that's what they've been studying. So I feel like they're using this to trap us inside of this fake world so that they can monitor us because we've been waking up. Everybody is waking up slowly but surely on how money works on how they implement these bills and these rules in society only to find out whether you're red or you're blue, both are out to get you. <laughs> whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, a conservative or a liberal, gay, straight, everybody's a slave. Everybody's a slave. And this is just another form of trapping you because trapping you physically isn't enough anymore. We got to have this. We need to know your every move. We need to know if you plotting a regime on us. You need. We need to know if you're planning on using that Second Amendment against us. <laughs> you know, we need to know everything. And if you're trapped inside of the world that we've created for you, well, how? Where are you gonna go? <laughs> so it's just like I wish that he would tell the second part of this. You know, I wish that he would say that this is very addictive and actually he did say something about it because we had a conversation online and we had a um I had said something in a thread on a post that he had posted on Instagram and the young lady above me was like yeah this is very 
you know, crazy that you're advocating for this, knowing that technology is basically, you know, an addictive thing. And I agreed with her and we had kind of like a back and forth. I might put it off in the description or near me. I'm, I got to find it first. But in a nutshell, the short version of it was that, hey, you're already a, you're already on an app. Might as well make some money off of it. And I get that. Make your money, make your chochos, do what you got to do because, if the world is going to go that way anyways, you might as well capitalize off of it. But his whole spiel about it was, it's your responsibility to um, censor yourself. You know, like cut down your time, your responsibility to cut down your time. And yes, it is our responsibility to monitor ourselves and how much we use these devices or how much we're going to be in the meta world. But what the thing with that is, is that when something new comes out, usually currency, um, the way that the work environment, um, the work environment goes, your house, the world essentially starts to move in that direction as well. I'll give you a um, example, credit cards. A long time ago, we used to be able to pay our rent with money. We used to be able to put our money in an envelope and go to the leasing office and give them the money. And then what did that go to? That went to money orders. And then where did that go to? That went to um, debit cards. And then where did that go to? Paying it online. And just notice with each one of those changes, they stopped taking the previous one. So once they stop um, using cash to pay your rent, then you could only use a money order. And then once they didn't take money orders, which was just last year or three years ago, then they said, oh, we don't take money orders anymore. You can only pay it online now. So the people that never wanted a debit card or a card or anything, guess what they was forced to do? They was forced to go out and go get a card. So let's put that into the metaverse world. Okay. I'm not a person that wants to go into the metaverse. I don't see any benefit of it. I like being in the real world. I like having real things in front of me. I like talking to real people, but uh, essentially I will be forced into the metaverse because who am I going to talk to if everybody's in the metaverse? How am I going to make deals with people and work if everybody's in the metaverse? How am I going to have a job? Because if no one's out here spending money, then I'm going to be forced into the metaverse to go work. So even though I don't want to be in the metaverse, I will essentially eventually um, get pushed into it because the world will go where the money is. I mean, like I said, we are essentially funding our own imprisonment. We're funding that. And you might probably ask, how are we doing that? How are we funding this metaverse, you might say, or this imprisonment of the metaverse? So let's, let's go over some things. We got deep fake. In the last couple of years, deep fake has evolved so much to the point where it's almost like you really can't even tell if things are fake or not. You know, I know that they showed a little rinky dink robots and everything moving all like not seamlessly. Well, just a couple of um, weeks ago, they showed a robot that was making facial expressions like a human and moving like, you know, I thought that I thought that nigga was going to start pop locking and dropping it the, the way that he was moving so seamlessly. But yeah, here's just a little video right here. So <laughs> And then we got 
things like Neuralink. Um, let me find that um that 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 article that Elon Musk was talking about. Here we go, right here. Elon Musk said that the neuron link, his brain interference. Elon Musk has said that Neuralink, his brain interface technology company, hopes to start implanting its microchips in humans next year. Neuralink, co-founded by by Musk in 2016, is developing a chip that will be implement implanted in people's brains to simultaneously record and stimulate brain activity. So basically he like you too dumb to stimulate brain activity. So here's a chip to do it. It's intended to have medical applications such as treating serious spinal cord injury and neurological disorders. And that's really crazy that he'll, he'll create something like a chip to do it like in your brain rather than just making the technology to just fix your spine. Like, why wouldn't you just make something to fix the spine instead of putting something in your head instead? Oh, whatever. During a live stream interview at the Wall Street Journal CEO Council Summit on Monday, Musk was asked what Neuralink planned to do in 2022. Um, Musk reiterated the two, 2022 line in a tweet. Progress will accelerate when we have devices in humans. Hard to have a nuanced conversation with monkeys. Next year, he said, must have previously offered earlier time frames for Neuralink to implant its chip in humans for the first time. He said in February that Neuralink could start implanting the tech in people by the end of 2021 in 2019. Must said, Neuralink hope to begin human testing by the end of 2020. Um, let me see. Must said Neuralink's working well in monkeys, and we're actually doing just a lot of testing and just confirming that it's very safe and reliable, and the Neuralink device can be removed safely. And then I think I got one more clip. He added. We hope to have this in our first humans, which will be people that have severe spinal cord injuries like tetraplegics and quadriplegics next year, pending FDA approval. Like we all trust the FDA. We do not trust the FDA, Elon. That that's the crazy part is that he's waiting for a a, a association that we don't even trust. These are the same people that have approved the jab and we show sure don't trust that. So it's very funny that you're getting the, the, the people that we don't trust at all to say, here's the green light Elon for the brain Neuralink. <laughs> Musk says that Neuralink standard for implanting the device are substantially higher than what the FDA requires. So, yeah, he trying to put a chip in y'all head by 2022. But don't worry because um, hopefully the FDA says, nah, this ain't safe enough, my guy. And so now it's just crazy. And it sound, if I wasn't crazy, it kind of sounds like the mark of the beast. I wonder where they're going to put this chip. I wonder if they're going to put it right here in the middle. If they say that that chip got to go right here, then y'all need to be Y'all need to know that something weird is going on. But on to the next reason of why we're literally funding our, you know, our prison, our imprisonment in this fake reality. So we already said deep fake. We already said Neuralink. Now let's go down to the cryptocurrency. Now I've already said a couple of things in past episodes about cryptocurrency and how they're basically making you spend real money to get fake money to go spend in this fake reality. That that's what, that's what it is. I mean, just think about it. The federal reserve and the government is going after people that did fake PPP loans. And you think that they're going to let things like, um, Bitcoin still fly. It like, I mean, I guess they're letting it fly because you're using real money, but it's like, that's eventually going to be used for something else. 
uh, they're trying to block off the government. What they say they're trying to block off the government. Me personally, I think that the government is in on it because ain't no way that you pension people for PPP loan, but you just letting things like Bitcoin go crazy with money. I, I just don't believe that. And it's just like, you usually use that for things like NFTs. I'm not really privy on like all the lingo around um, Bitcoin and all these like coins and tokens and stuff. But, you know, NFTs are sold and purchased with these type of things that you can buy collector items and, you know, basically decorate what, what an NFT you can use it for like art and stuff like that. So basically you can buy fake art for your fake reality in your fake house, you know, and speaking of decorating things in your fake reality, digital real estate, you're going to use the fake art to put up in your fake digital real estate house, because that's not real. It's only real when you put the VR goggles on. So not only can you live there, but you can decorate your home as well with the finest digital art. And don't worry if you're bored, if you're bored in the virtual reality, you can go to a concert. Don't believe me. Justin Bieber just did it. And Travis Scott. Here go, here go, um, a, a article that I had pulled up before the episode started. Here we go right here. Uh-uh, hold up. Where is it at, bro? Oh, there you go, right there. Justin Bieber performed at a live concert this month, but the show wasn't in a stadium or an arena like recent performances from Ariana Grande, the weekend Travis Scott, this concert was held in the metaverse, the online world that stretches the corners of inter internet into immersive four dim dimensional experience fans from all over the globe. That's, that's really crazy. They're like, um, it immerses over the internet in a four dimensional experience. What are you talking about? That's fake. You literally can buy tickets and see him in show for real, for real, not his avatar. And you're at the house. Like what is, what is going on? Like seriously, like really what's going on with people like to take a, to buy into a fake house, a fake land, fake art, which is not fake. It's just digital. But you, I, I feel like it's fake because you can't ever touch it. Like you can't touch like the numbers in your bank. Like I, I, I know that it sounds really weird how I'm trying to explain it, but like you can't touch any of this stuff. Like you can't bring it to the real world. Like if I have VR goggles on and I run up to the stage and grab on to Travis Scott and take off my VR goggles, Travis Scott is not going to be in my living room. This is very weird and I cannot believe people are buying into this, but whatever I digress, here's the rest of the article fans from all over the globe, all over the globe. Y'all watch Mr. Bieber avatar sing songs from his hit album. Justice Inv investors were watching too, preparing for the digital land boom that appears just months away. They are snapping snapping up concert venues, shopping malls, and other properties in the metaverse. <sighs> I, I, I don't know what to say about that. It's just, it's, I, I don't know what to say about that. It's just crazy. It's crazy that we don't want the real experience of a concert. We would rather have it in a metaverse where we have to put on goggles and see the avatar, not even the real person no more. The avatar of our favorite superstar. Whatever. And then, and then, you know, here we go. So not only are you going to be connected into the internet with your neural brain link, you can spend money in the metaverse with your cryptocurrency, your fake money. And then you can go buy NFTs with the cryptocurrency that you have to decorate your digital real estate, your fake house. And then if you get bored, you can go to a fake concert. And then what are you going to wear to this concert? Don't worry. Nike got you. They in on the metaverse too. They here you go right here. 
So Nike has filed several trademark application as it prepares to enter the metaverse. As part of the application, the company in, indicate its intent to make and sell virtual branded sneakers and apparel. So you will be swaggy as hell in the metaverse with your Jordans and your Air Force Ones and dad Nike shoes, along with your Nike jumpsuit. People familiar with Nike's plan said the space is a priority for the brand and consumers can expect to see more virtual ro rollouts in the months ahead. So <laughs> it's just crazy. And then for those people that think like me, that's going to just stay out here. Well, Bill Gates is buying up all the farmland, not only so that he can push out the farmers because those are the real independent people because they know how to grow the most valuable thing, which is what food they know how to grow food. Everybody, whether you rich or poor needs food. So you're not only going to buy up all the farmland, then make fake GMO food, bring the price of real food down because GMO grows faster and it grows more abundant than you waiting, um, six or seven months for the vegetable or fruit that you want GMO probably grows within three months. And so now it grows faster. You can sell it cheaper because it grew faster and a lot more of it, but you're going to push those people out that are the true independence of this world. And then once they can't make money off of the resource sources that they know how to make and how to sell, then where are we all about to get ready to go? We all about to get ready to go into Smart cities. He bought a bunch of land in Arizona recently. Here's the proof of that. Here's the excerpt. Where is it at, bro? Where is it at? Where's that Bill Gates one that I just seen? There he there it go, right there. This week, and this was wrote in 2017, y'all. This week we learned that tech guru and mega philanthropist Bill Gates purchased two thousand 25,000 acres of land in Arizona with the intent to build a smart city from the ground up. The company, the community called Belmont will create a forward thinking community with a communication and infra infrastructure spine that embraces cutting edge technology designed around high speed digital network data centers and new manufacturing technologies. <clears throat> and distribution models, autonomous vehicles, and autonomous logistic hubs, according to the spokesman for Gates real estate firm, Belmont. Now, they pretty much have not been talking a lot about smart cities, but that's because the pandemic hit. Once everybody get the jab and everybody succumb to this totalitarian state that we in, the United States, then they will be back onto their BS of building this metaverse and this smart city. Me, honestly, I feel like the smart city is the precursor to metaverse. Once we get so dependent on technology, then the metaverse will be snug and cozy for us to go live in that mug forever. You know, you know, we're going to be completely indulged into the smart city. And so, it's like we got Elon pushing the brain chips in our head. We got Bill buying up all of the land so that he can not plant anything for us to eat in the near future, not let the farmers just keep their independence and farm and keep giving us good food, but he's using it for smart cities, which is literally the precursor of us being in the metaverse full time. You got brother Ben X giving us pointers on how to buy into this fake reality. Then you got an anonymous owner of cryptocurrency that we're going to be switching over to, which is fake money because I've not seen not now one Bitcoin, a actual coin that you can touch in your hand and store away for hard times. And you got um, deep fake distorting our reality so that we don't know what's real or fake anymore. You seen that video that I showed y'all in the beginning of this talk. Could you like, if you didn't know that deep fake existed, you'd be like, what the hell going on with um, Ben? What's, what's going on with him? 
Or t- oh, Tom. I think that was Tom Cruise. What the hell going on with Tom Cruise? Why are you acting all goofy like that? Okay, scroll. So it's like, can we all at this point just admit that we are buying into our own demise and pushing fake reality on ourselves? Because when we're all in fake reality, ooing and eyeing, eyeing and buying fake non-tangible things, they will be out in the real world making sure that everything that is tangible, like land and gold and oil and minerals and preservatives and stuff like that is either too high for us to buy or there's not any more of them. So once you wake up from your whole dreamland or the reality that you've created in metaverse, all of the real tangible things will be gone. You won't have them anymore. So what does that mean? Now you have to go back into the metaverse. You can't come back out because where is all your riches and gold in fake reality land? That's where it's at. And that's what we're buying into. And if you don't think so, you better start reading up on some of them articles. You better start putting together the tea leaves. You better start reading them because that's exactly where this world is going. I just don't understand why people are just not seeing where all of this is going. I'd like to end this episode on a quote. I don't know who said it. I wish I know, knew who said it, but I've heard it in so many podcasts and I've heard it on so many shows. But the quote is, we will own nothing and be happy. And that's exactly where we're at because we're all about to go own essentially nothing because we cannot take it with us in the real world. And we're going to be happy as hell that we got on all the swag and the big house in the digital world, the fake swag in the digital world, the fake money in the digital world and all the things that are of real substance and tangible is going to be gone. And we're going to be happy. Super crazy. Anyways, that is the episode for today. I hope that y'all enjoyed my ranting and raving. You can follow me on An Hour with Crowder on Facebook and Instagram and Crowder the Great on Twitter. Go look at some of my TikToks, get those views up, stop being stingy with the likes, and I'm out. Peace.